Good day everyone. Today I'm going to discuss to you about recognizing types of conics and the generate cases. Let's start with identifying types of conics given its standard form. Let's start with circle. Circle has a standard form of x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is greater than or equal to 0. Next is parabola. Parabola has a standard form of 8x squared equals 4py or y squared equals 4px. If it is x squared equals 4py, then the parabola opens upward. But if it is x squared equals negative 4py, then it implies that the parabola opens downward. On the other hand, if the parabola has an equation of y squared equals 4px, then the parabola opens to the right. However, if it is y squared equals negative 4px, then the parabola opens to the left. The next one is an ellipse. An ellipse has a standard form of x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. This standard form has an orientation of horizontal. However, if it, this will be vertical, if a squared is below y squared. Next is hyperbola. Hyperbola has a standard form of x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. The orientation of the standard form of the equation of a hyperbola is horizontal because x squared is positive. However, if y squared will be positive, then automatic the hyperbola is oriented vertically. Let's identify the types of conics and orientation of these five examples. First, x plus 5 quantity squared over 90 minus y minus 4 quantity squared over 60 equals 1. Since there are fractions or there is a fraction involved, it implies that we're going to choose only between an ellipse and hyperbola. But since the two terms are separated by minus sign, it implies that the type of conics is hyperbola and the orientation is horizontal. Why is it horizontal? Since x is positive, this one, therefore, the orientation is horizontal. Let's try the second example. For the second example, there are, is also fraction or fractions involved. It implies that we're going to choose between an ellipse and hyperbola. But since the two terms are separated by plus sign, it implies that the type of conics is an ellipse. And the orientation is vertical. Why? Because the greater denominator is below y squared. If it is below x squared, automatic the orientation is horizontal. Let's try the, second, the third example. Again, there is fraction involved. And since it is separated by, the two terms are separated by a minus sign, it implies that the type of conics is a hyperbola. And the orientation is vertical because y comes first before x or y is positive, as you can see this one. Next is this one. This is, there is no fraction involved and there is x squared, it follows x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It implies that the type of conic is circle and the orientation is man. The last one is this one. x minus 17 quantity squared equals negative 80 quantity y plus 12. Since it follows x squared equals, as you can see, it follows x squared equals negative 4py. It implies that the type of conic is parabola and the orientation is it opens downward. Why it opens downward? Because it is x squared and the other side has a negative sign. Let's try an, another example. y squared equals 3x. Since it follows y squared equals 4px, automatic this is a parabola. And what, that, what is the orientation? Very good. The orientation is it opens to the right. 
why it opens to the right? Since the um, variable with squared is y, automatic we're going to choose only between left or right. But since the other side has a positive sign, automatic it is it opens to the right. Let's try another example x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared equals 4. So, in this example, we can see that it follows x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So, automatic this is a circle and there is no orientation. How about this one? This also follows x squared equals 4py. So since it follows x squared equals 4py, automatic this is a parabola. And what is the orientation? So as you can see, um, since the variable with squared is x, automatic we're going to choose between upward and downward. But since the other side is positive, automatic it opens upward. Next is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So since there is or there are fractions involved, automatic we're going to choose between an ellipse or hyperbola. But since the two terms are separated by a plus sign, automatic that is an ellipse. Then what is the orientation? We're going to take a look on the greater denominator and that's 9. And since it is below x squared, automatic, the orientation is horizontal. Let's try another example. x plus 4 quantity squared over 16 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. Since there is or are fractions involved, automatic, we're going to choose between an ellipse or hyperbola. However, since the two um, terms are separated by a minus sign, automatic, that is a hyperbola. Now the orientation is since x has a positive sign, this term has a positive sign, it involves x, automatic the orientation is horizontal. Okay, that's since you already learned how to identify the type of conics given its standard form, now we're going to discuss how to identify the type of conics given its general form. First, we need to take into consideration the following things. First, we need to identify the values of a and b. a is the numerical coefficient of x squared, while b is the numerical coefficient of y squared. So if a is equal to b, then automatic that is a circle. But if a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0, automatic it is a parabola. And if a is not equal to b, but a, b is positive, or if we multiply the values of a and b, the result is positive, automatic that is an ellipse. And if a is not equal to b and you multiply the values of a and b and the result is negative, automatic that is a hyperbola. Let's try answering or identifying the values of A, B, type of conics, and orientation of these five examples. Let's start with the first example. So here we have A is equal to 5, since 5 is the numerical coefficient of x squared. Then we're going to identify the value of B. Since there is no term with y squared, automatic B is equal to 0. Since B is equal to 0, Automatic, the type of conics is a parabola and the orientation is upward. Why is it upward? Since the variable with squared is x, we're going to take a look on y. We have negative 12y. If it is negative, automatic, if that is upward. And if it is positive, automatic, the orientation will be downward. Let's proceed with the next example. Here, we have a equals negative 11, since that's the numerical coefficient of x squared. Here, b is equal to 20. Since a and b are not equal, but they have a like sign, 
automatic, the type of conics is hyperbola. And the orientation is vertical. Why is it vertical? Because 20 is positive and it is the numerical coefficient of y squared, automatic that is vertical. For the third example, we have a equals 5 and that is the numerical coefficient of x squared. And we have b, which is also equal to 5, which is the numerical coefficient of y squared. Since a and b are equal, automatic, the type of conic is a circle and there is no orientation. For the fourth example, we have a equals 121. And we also have b, which is equal to 16. Since a and b are not equal, but they have like sign, automatic, the type of conic is an ellipse. Why the orientation is vertical? Since the lower value is 16 and it is beside or the numerical coefficient of y squared, automatic that is vertical. For the fifth example, we have a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1. So automatic, the type of, since they are the values of a and b are equal. Automatic, the type of conex is a circle and there is no orientation involved. Let's try an another example. For instance, 6x squared plus y squared minus 12x equals 0. Let's try identifying the value of a. a is the numerical coefficient of x squared and that is 6. Let's identify the value of b. b is the numerical coefficient of y squared. So there is an indecible numerical coefficient of 1. Since a and b are not equal, and a and b are both positive, automatic, this is an ellipse. Now, what is the orientation? Since 1 is the lower value, and it is the numerical coefficient of y squared, automatic, the orientation is vertical. Let's try another example. For this example, we have a equals 2 for the numerical coefficient of x squared and we have b is also equal to 2 for the numerical coefficient of y squared. Since a is equal to b, automatic this is a circle and there is no orientation involved. For this example, we have a is equal to 4 for the numerical coefficient of x squared and b is equal to 0. Why is it 0? Because there is no term with y squared. So automatic b is equal to 0. Since b is equal to 0, automatic it is a parabola. Now what is the orientation? Since the variable with squared is x, automatic we're going to take a look on y. Since it is positive y, and if we're going to transpose this to the other side, it will become negative. So automatic, the parabola opens downward. Next is this one. A is equal to 4, since that is the numerical coefficient of x squared, and B is equal to negative 1, since that is the numerical coefficient of y squared. Since A and B are not equal, automatic we're going to choose between an ellipse or hyperbola. However, this is a hyperbola because A and B have an like sign. Now, what is the orientation? Since 4 is positive and it is the numerical coefficient of x squared, automatic, the orientation is horizontal. Now, since you already learned how to identify the type of conics given its standard or general form, now it's our time to discuss about the generate cases. To identify the, the type of the generate case, the first thing that we need to do is to transform the general form to its standard form. So in transforming general to standard, we're going to combine like terms. So we're going to have x squared plus 5x plus y squared minus y and 7 will be transposed to the other side. So therefore, it will be x squared plus 5x and then we're going to put um, space for completing squares, plus 
y squared minus y equals negative 7. Now, let's use the completing squares. So, to get the value being added in this part, we're going to do b over 2 squared. b is 5, so we're going to have 5 over 2 squared. And 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4. Since we add 25 over 4 in this side, we will also add 25 over 4 on the other side. For this one, we have negative 1, or let's write 1, over 2 squared. So, therefore, we're going to add 1 fourth. So, we will be adding 1 fourth on the other side. So, factoring this one, it will be x plus 5 over 2 squared plus y minus 1 half quantity squared is equal to, we're going to get the LCD. If we're going to add fractions, we're going to get LCD and the LCD is 4. 4 divided by 1 is 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. 4 divided by 4 is 1 times 25, the answer is 25. 4 divided by 4 is 1 times 1 is 1. Now let's bring down this one. x plus 5 half squared plus y minus 1 half squared is equal to negative 28 plus 25 is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 over 4. Or negative 2 over 4 can be simplified into negative 1 half. So therefore, we have x plus 5 over 2 squared plus y minus 1 half squared is equal to negative 1 half. Since r or r squared is equal to negative, therefore this is not a circle. And that is what they call an empty set. When are we going to see that this is an empty set? This is an empty set if this, um, after transforming general to standard, it should be circle or ellipse but it is equated by a negative value, it implies that is an empty set. Again, I'm going to repeat. If after transforming general to standard, and it should be a circle or an ellipse, however, it is equated to a negative sign, automatic that is an empty set. On the other hand, if that is equal to zero and not equals to negative sign, that is a point. Again, so there are two conditions. It will be negative. It will be an empty set if the standard form, it should be a circle or an ellipse that is being equated by a negative sign. However, if that should that is a circle or an ellipse but it is equated by zero, then automatic that is a point. So in our example, it should be a circle because it follows x squared plus y squared. However, it is equated by a negative value. So it implies that is an empty set. So what is the implication? The implication is this one. It is not always necessary for us to identify just simply the values of A and B because there are also some degenerate cases. So the first thing that we need to do in order for us to assure that we can identify the type of conics given its general form is to transform the general form to its standard form. Let's try an, another example. For instance, this one again, let's transform this general form to standard form. So we, we have 36x squared plus 360x combining this one plus negative 64y squared minus 512y equals 124. 124 should be transposed to the other side. After that, we're going to have 36 quantity x squared plus, so we're going to divide 36 x squared divided by 36, we have x squared. 360x divided by 36, we have 10x. So we're going to have, we're going to put negative 64 to outside the parentheses, so therefore we have negative 64 negative 64y squared divided by negative 64, it will be y squared, negative 512y divided by negative 64, and that is plus 8y, and then equals 124. 
Now let's use completing the squares. So in order for us to know the value that we're going to add on this side, we're going to do b over 2 squared. So b is equal to 10, so therefore we have 10 over 2 squared. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and if we're going to square 5, that is 25. So we're going to add 25 here, and we're going to add 25 times 36. Now to this side, we have 8 as the value of b. So 8 divided by 2 squared, the answer is 16. So therefore, we will also add here 16 times negative 64. Now we're going to factor. So we have 36 quantity x plus 5 squared minus 64 quantity y plus 4 squared is equal to, we need to simplify 124 plus 25 times 36 plus 16 times negative 64. Simplifying this, that is equal to 0. Supposedly, it should be hyperbola, right? Because there is a, a minus sign. However, it is equated by 0. If that happens, the type of degenerate case is two intersecting lines. So we have three types of degenerate cases. So we have point, we have empty set, and we also have two intersecting lines. Let's recall, it will be a point if after transforming, it should be a circle or an ellipse that is being equated by zero. But after transforming, it should be circle or ellipse, but it is equated by a negative sign that is an empty set. And then the last one is two intersecting lines. If after transforming, it will be a hyperbola, however, it is equated by zero. Let's try an example. For instance, x squared plus 4y squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Let's transform this one. So let's have x squared minus 2x plus 4y squared is equal to 15. We're going to transpose negative 15 to the other side. So now we're going to um, use completing the square. So we have 2 divided by 2 squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then squaring 1, the answer is 1. So we're going to add also 1 here. Then we're going to have x minus 1 quantity squared plus 4y squared is equal to 16. So we need to divide both sides by 16. So after transforming, we have x minus 1 quantity squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So as you can see, since the value is not negative or equals to 0, automatic, this is not a type of degenerate case, and this is an ellipse, oriented horizontally. Okay, so like what I told you, it is important for us to transform the general to standard form because it is not always the case that if we're going to identify the values of A and B, we can identify the type of conics because there are also some degenerate cases. Let's try another example. So let's combine like terms. So we have x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 4y is equal to, we're going to transpose 8, it will become negative 8. Let's use completing the square. So we're going to have 2 divided by 2 squared because we use b over 2. Then 2 divided by 2 is 1. Once we get the squared of 1, that is also 1. So let's add 1 here. Here we have 4. So we have 4 divided by 2 squared. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Once it's squared 2, the answer is 4. So we're going to add also 4 here. So then factor x squared plus 2x plus 1, and that's x plus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to Negative 8 plus 1 plus 4, the answer is negative 3. Supposedly, it should be a circle because it follows x squared plus y squared. However, it is equal to a negative value. Therefore, it implies that this is an empty set. Okay, let's try another example. We have x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 2y plus 2 equals 0. 
So let's combine like terms. So we have x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus 2y is equal to, transposing 2, it will become negative 2. Now, we're going to do completing the square. So we have 2 divided by 2 squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Squaring 1, the answer is 1. So we're going to add 1. We're going to add 1 also in the other side. On this example, we have 2 divided by 2 squared. So again, the same. We have 1. We will also add here 1. So factory x squared plus 2x plus 1, that's x plus 1 quantity squared, plus y plus 1 quantity squared is equal to negative 2 plus 1 plus 1. The answer is 0. Again, this should be a circle because it follows x squared plus y squared. However, it is equated by 0. So automatic, this is a type of degenerate case and this is a point. Let's try another example. So again, in transforming general to standard form, we're going to start combining like terms and then transpose a constant term. So we have 9x squared plus negative 4y squared minus 24y is equal to transposing negative 36. It will be positive 36. Now, we're going to put negative 4 outside the parentheses. So it will be 9x squared minus 4, and then use the common monomial factor, we're going to divide negative 4y squared by negative 4, the answer is y squared. Negative 24y divided by negative 4, the answer is 6y, is equal to 36. Now let's use completing the squares. So the value of b is 6, so 6 divided by 2 is 3, and the squaring 3, the answer is 9. Since we add 9 here, we're going to add also 9 here times negative 4. Why there is negative 4? Because there is a negative 4 outside the parentheses. Now let's factor. So we have 9x squared minus 4. Quantity, let's factor y squared plus 6y plus 9. And that is y plus 3 quantity squared is equal to simplifying 36 plus 9 times negative 4. The answer is 0. It should be a hyperbola because there is a minus sign separating the two terms. However, it is equated by zero. Therefore, this is a type of degenerate case and that is two intersecting lines. Okay, so that's all for today's discussion. I hope you've learned a lot for today's discussion. Thank you and happy math learning.